Um, so it's um, it's a great pleasure to welcome the third speaker um, um, of today's session, um, Vi Zhang from MIT, and he will talk about Kutla Rappaport special cycles at more AFL conjectures. Thank you. Uh, so first, I'd like to thank the organizers for, for the invitation to speak in this conference. And uh, um, so I think I first met Steve uh, maybe in 2005 um, when I was a graduate student. And that was maybe right after I passed my Cornifan exam. So I went to this conference in Maryland. Uh, it was great because at least I actually got a, a, my thesis topic uh, from, from that conference. On the, on, on the theta, I mean, on the, on the generating uh, series of, uh, of uh, special, special cycles. Uh, but of course, uh, over the years, uh, I, uh, I mean, maybe like many of us in the audience, uh, a lot of papers by Steve uh, had a huge uh, impact on, on me. Uh, uh, not only his uh, paper on uh, theta correspondences or theta series, which is the topic for this. Uh, which is one of the tests we have to pass as a speaker here for this conference. <laughs> so we try to pass that test. But also his uh, other papers, expository, like uh, on the local lines correspondence, his, uh, even his, his notes on the test thesis is one of uh, the references for my, for my uh, algebra number theory course, when I teach test thesis. So, so, uh, so it's a wonderful opportunity for me to uh, to be here uh, to actually say thank you. Uh, so uh, and then so so I will start with well I don't I couldn't find I don't have photo like it's impossible to beat Michael his photo yesterday uh, which was Steve's uh, maybe in the seventy or eighty so some of those photos were before I was born so <laughs> but uh, the first one I had uh, this was actually I think it was in the year. 2007, uh, um, in took a check in Colombia, uh, you know, conference. Uh, um, so uh, we have more about this photo. So uh, you can, as you can see, Steve is on the back, and I actually myself is is, is here. <laughs> so that was a wonderful conference. I will, which is actually directly related to today's topic. So as it will be clear later on. So. Um, so today, uh, so now let me, so here's the plan. Um, so, um, so the topic will be about uh, the so-called uh, arithmetic uh, gangrose prasad conjectures, uh, but moving from, uh, from the reductive case to non-reductive case uh, in some sense. So what, what, what do I mean? So let me put this into uh, uh, the context of uh, um, well, so, so okay. Look, so there are many, many uh, works in this in this direction. Um, uh, let me just quickly sort of give a, a overview uh, what this is about or where the question uh, comes from. So, um, so maybe it's well. So. And it might actually be easier notation wise to uh, just start with a, a group G, which is uh, assumed to be reductive. Uh, so this will be always reductive. But we also consider a subgroup H. Um, so, so this pair, so maybe uh, it, it's actually better to just consider the more general case, so called uh, in, the, in the context of so called spherical spherical uh, pair. So the subgroup is a spherical subgroup in the sense uh, the quotient, uh, so the quotient, okay, let's say over, over number field, so a few. Um, so the quotient has a open orbit under the action of the uh, Borel subgroup of G. Um, let's say over algebra, algebra closure actually. So, so this is a geometrical property. Um, um, so of course, examples relevant to this talk will be uh, so in, in, the, in the context of arithmetic gangrose prasad, the example. So 
So G can you can take U n times U U n plus one or U m plus one. So And H is is a subgroup uh, sort of embed, uh, embedded into G diagonally. Uh, so or you replace unitary group by orthogonal group. Uh, so in this case, this subgroup is reductive. Uh, so, so we have studied a lot of these examples, uh, which in some sense generalize uh, the work of uh, uh, was and gross Zagier. Uh, and also triple product, which we have uh, seen yesterday in uh, Dick's talk, uh, with, where, uh, which actually Steve uh, made a lot of, uh, did a lot of study. Um, uh, so, so this was sort of what we, we knew. So is to, well, one question is to consider the Shimura variety attached to a subgroup. Uh, well, with a suitable choice of Shimura data, so, so then one can consider the intersection uh, so on, on the bigger Shimura variety attached to G, the group, bigger group G. Um, or maybe one should project down to certain isotypic component of a suitable automorphic representation pi. And this is expected to, to be uh, related to L function or derivative of L function. As the example of what uh, Gross-Zagi formula suggests for suitable L function, so uh, so of course th there are many more examples where this spherical, spherical variety uh, or the subgroup here uh, is it, okay. This example, this is reductive, but there are many examples where this is not reductive. So in fact, H is reductive. Uh, if and only if so this this quotient uh, is affine. So so today we want to actually study maybe what happens if if H is not reductive, so equivalently, um, uh, you know, by by theorem of Luna, uh, this quotient is not affine. So let me let me um, give some example or the key example in this talk. Uh, so example here I prepared already. So this is for the so-called Bessel subgroup. Um, so, so this includes uh, the example in the arithmetic GGP conjecture for U, UM times UM plus one. So the setup is as following. Uh, suppose I have a, uh, let's fix a pair of integers, uh, N and M. So satisfying this, uh, so the difference is, uh, is, is odd number. So let's fix a quadratic quadratic extension f over f zero, um, and fix Hermitian space of dimension n. So I will note uh, I will denote uh, g of v uh, the unitary group. Uh, so so the point is that you can replace Hermitian space by quadratic space. So so the following construction works equally well. Uh, so the additional input is the following: uh, you have to fix the filtration of uh, of uh, uh, formations uh, vector spaces v. So let's say I have a filtration by um, uh, of uh, step two r plus one. So each step is co-dimension one, except uh, except the middle one. So the so the the middle one. So also you require this filtration to be uh, self self dual in a sense. Uh, those two guys are exactly the uh, orthogonal complement to each other, and so on. So, so you have this sort of symmetric situation. So, in other words, really only the first uh, first R uh, steps matter; they determine the rest. So, again, I didn't write, but all the co-dimension here is assumed to be to be one. Uh, so then I. The only non sort of non co dimension one case is the one in the middle. So I denote this, this quotient by, by W sharp. Uh, so then I consider another uh, piece of data, which is a vector here. 
in this uh, W sharp and consider its orthogonal complement. So it, it is that its dimension will be exactly uh, M. Uh, well, suppose U is, U is uh, long isotopic. So, U, so the Hermitian norm is non zero. And uh, that's important. And um, oh, well, implicitly, I was assuming, I mean, implicitly, uh, those first R steps, they are all totally isotropic because uh, they are contending in their orthogonal complement. Um, so that's the setup we have. So then from, from this filtration, you can, from this filtration plus its choice of special vector, you can produce, you can define, uh, well, first of all, you can define a parabolic subgroup, which is attached to this, uh, this sort of flag. So that's a parabolic. So it has a levy. So it's a levy, so it's a levy quotient is isomorphic to to the unitary group for uh, uh, for for this uh, quotient in the middle W sharp, and also for the for restriction scanner over the quadrat over the quadratic extension uh, of G O one. So so this is because I'm assuming all the coordination of, of those first R steps, each uh, graded piece has dimension one. So then the, I can define from here the so-called Bessel's I mean Bessel subgroup. Uh, uh, so, uh, so this is denoted by H. Um, so this is actually the fiber product for, so it's actually in, sort of induced by this quotient to the levy. So you take, well, there's, there's obvious map from, from G, from the unitary group of W, which is called emission one subspace here. So, so you have this embedding to, to this factor. Then of course you, you, you consider the trivial, trivial, uh, trivial element for, for the rest of the GO, GO1. So, so that's, that's the best of subgroup, but really you view this as a subgroup of the product. Um, for just for the, for the background, so this is related to the uh, rankin silberg integral uh, for GON. So in other words, if you, if you consider the GON case, this is more or less related. Uh, I mean, it's something that appeared in the, in the, uh, the uh, rankin silberg construction for GON times GO, uh, GOM uh, in, the, in the work of J.K. Piatesky, Shapiro, and Shalaika, uh, and so on. So, so this is a, uh, this is the basic subgroup. So clearly, the special case. So the special case when r equal to zero, you recover. See so r is zero. H will be simply given by the smaller. Well, in that case, v is equal to. So there's no interesting field uh, flag here. So really, in this case, H is simply the smaller unitary group that so will recover the uh, so-called uh, arithmetic GGP situation. So, so here, so the goal today is, I mean, one of the goals is to, is to answer the following question. I mean, can we actually formulate a uh, arithmetic GGP conjecture for, 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 for the best, uh, for the best of subgroup? Or, or uh, okay, of course, the first, Obstruction is already, there's no Shimura variety attached to H, being, uh, where H is a, uh, is a, um, a long reductive group. Uh, so, so maybe we're in the, in the, in the domain of so-called the dark matter where Steve <laughs> mentioned yesterday. So, um, so with that said, so it's still possible to move to the world of light matter. Uh, so what happens is, uh, so globally, we don't have such object, but locally, it indeed is possible to to formulate um, so a local version of, of this I mean, this expectation, namely, one can formulate a local module, a local cycle uh, on certain uh, local version of Shimura varieties, and one can form the intersection number and uh, try to relate uh, this intersection number to to the local uh, Incarnation of L function or derivative of L function. Uh, so that's the, the the goal of this talk. So um, so for, for that purpose, I have to. So now we're going to move to the local, the, you know, the light the, the light matter world. So let's um, consider local Shimura variety. So by which I mean, uh, well, okay. So I'm gonna only focus on the case of. Uh, 
so-called EL or PEL case. Um, so I will introduce certain uh, sort of a long reduction version uh, of, of so-called Rappaport zinc space, so formal modular space. So for that purpose, I will first recall what is you know, the reductive case. So, so when the structure group is, is a reductive group, but again, I will only focus in the case of EL and the PEL case, which are uh, easier to uh, consider. So, so in this case, what has a more refined structure. So, um, uh, so let me start with so-called uh, RZ data, um, or integral version of RZ data. Uh, and actually, we assume they are unramified, uh, again, in the EOPO case. So the RZ data consists of the following, uh, namely, uh, so I have a, a finite, okay, I assume this is unramified extension of QP, and a vector space uh, over F. Uh, so in the PEL case, one needs an additional input, which is this alternating parent, perfect parent, perfect alternating parent. Uh, then you define this group G as uh, the F linear automorphism of V. Um, in the case of EL, and in the case of PEL, you have to, you also require this to be, uh, uh, require those, uh, you define this group to be uh, the subgroup, which respect the linear, uh, this uh, alternating parent up to a scanner. So, uh, so, to, so that's a group theoretical data. Uh, so additional to the groups, you also need uh, a uh, co-character, um, so co-character over algebra closure. Then there's also another one, which is, a uh, sigma conjugate classes in G uh, valued in the completion of the maximum unremitted extension. So here we denote F, uh, about this F, the algebra closure of FP, QP really the this completion of maximum unremitted extension. So that's the rational RZ data. We also need a lattice, which is a, a, a lattice of full rank, o, uh, OF stable lattice. So in, this, in the PL case, I simply assume it's self-due for this talk. So a re remark is, so, so, um, so this sort of, what is, what is the meaning of those uh, additional uh, inputs? So, so here, B, together with this vector space, once you base change to QP Brevi, gives you an isocrystal, or in the PL case, uh, isocrystal with G structure. Um, so for this talk, I will assume B is basic. So, <clears throat> so this simply means uh, there's only one slope. So the Newton polygon is a, is a, um, has only one single slope. So, um, so from the other data uh, mu, so you will get a uh, filtration uh, weighted by the, you know, so by, by the decomposition as a, according to the character of, of GM. So we simply assume there's only there are only two possible weights, zero and one. So this is an assumption uh, in this case. So what are the so given those uh, data? So what we can do is to uh, to form a formal modular space with G as the structure group in some sense. So um, so here let's consider. Uh, so let me give a very quick. Uh, an overview of what what is this modular space uh, how how this is constructed uh, starting from you know starting from the integral data aromatic data uh, so we consider the category of schemes over over uh, spec zp brevi uh, where p is assumed to be local meal potent um, so the key objects will be pairs of uh, P divisible group together with the OS action in the EL case. So in the PEL case, you also add a uh, polarization, which we assume to be principal for this talk. So this is this is uh, consistent with the choice of a self-dual lattice we made earlier. So so here I choose a self-dual lattice. In general, if you change the self-dual lattice to some more general. Um, <clears throat> 
certain general analysis, you, have, you can modify this condition accordingly. Uh, so plus one important condition, so-called a with sign condition. So this condition says, uh, this condition specify how OF acts on, on the Lie algebra. Um, so the, car the characteristic polynomial of the action on Lie algebra is specified by, uh, by this weight decomposition uh, of V we, we made here. So basically this decomposition, uh, basically mu determines how you specify the, uh, the Cordovis condition, Cordovis signature condition, so to speak. Um, so that is gonna be the uh, objects we want to parameterize. However, you see there are, I mean, there, there is a large group of automorphisms for such pair or triple. So, uh, so one has to enumerate uh, the automorphisms in order to have a uh, modular space. So what one does is to fix a framing object. So you fix one object over, uh, over, over the residue field. Um, such that it's corresponding isocrystal or the isocrystal with G structure uh, is precisely the one we, we got up to isomorphism from, uh, from, this, uh, from the data we gave. So then one can formulate the following modular factor, namely given any scheme you consider such triple in the EL case, in the PL case, you put a polarization inside. So the only new thing is this uh, so-called framing. So this is a framing which will eliminate the automorphism, at least make this problem, uh, this moduli problem uh, representable. So this is a framing. Um, it's a quasi isogeny uh, for the special of, of, of this p-divisible group uh, between, between the special fiber and the base change of the framing objects. The, the fixed object to the special fiber of uh, of, uh, of S, the test scheme. So Rockwell and Zink prove that, so, well, they prove a more general result, but under the current assumptions, uh, the result says uh, such modular, modular factor is, represent, uh, is represented by a formal scheme, um, which is formally smooth over, uh, over the base, and it's local in theorem. Um, so, so that's what happens in the in the uh, in the EO and the PO case. I mean, at least for a ramified one. So let me let me give examples which are relevant to this this talk. So I give two examples. One is in the EO case. Other one is in the in the PO case. So in the EO case, so really, I, I let me just even uh, simplify a little further by assuming this. Uh, field extension is, is trivial, is just QP. So the group will be just GON over QP for certain N, uh, which is the dimension of this vector space V. So then here we're looking at pair of PW group. And well, this ZP action is sort of is redundant. It's there's already one for PW group. So it doesn't really give any new information. So the, the Cordovis condition is, is the same as seen is the same as specifying the dimension of the of the p uh, p group is given by the dimension of of this vector space. Um, so then you okay. So this the framing object will be um, a p p group over uh, over uh, f uh, the residue field of, of given height n and dimension d. Uh, uh, here, so um, um, so which is unique up to isogeny. So um, so it's isocrystal is is precisely specified by the sigma conjugate class. Um, so the real uh, okay the the most maybe the most uh, common uh, the you know the used most used example. Uh, certainly, this was used in, in the proof of a local Lamans correspondence uh, in the work of uh, Harris and Taylor. So this is the Rubin Tate deformation space, um, or okay, or actually maybe if it's there's difference between the Rubin Tate deformation space and here, you're actually allow 
infinitely destroy the union of such looping head space. So, um, so that's in the one dimensional case, um, one dimension PDV group. Um, then this space has a group action by, by the units in the, uh, in the division algebra uh, uh, with housing invariant one over n, uh, where n is a dimension over, and n is the height of the PDV group. Um, so, so this space, has a very simple reduce structure. So the reduce scheme has zero dimension. So in some sense, it's, it's the easiest example you can imagine. Um, it's completely formal, formal in the sense all the directions are formal. So the reduce scheme is, is basically is really zero dimension. So the next example is less formal in the sense it has bigger uh, uh, dim uh, dimension of reduce scheme. So in this example where I, I take the height three and uh, dimension six, so the slope, so the slope is really uh, one half so for the Newton polygon. Um, so here you get, so you can, you can fix the choice of this framing object as the product of three super singular PDV group of one dimension and height two. So namely those PDV group you get from super singular P Super singular elliptic curve. So that's that's why I chose E as a notation. Um, so in this case, you, this formal modular space is has relative dimension three times three. So so there's a simple formula uh, for the dimension um, and has a action by G of three of of a uh, of a long split quaternion algebra. So which, which is the inner form of G of six, uh, inner form of, of G. Um, so, so that's this example. So, so, so let's give example for, for G or for, for yield case. So what happened, I still need to have example in the, in the P yield case. Uh, so, so this is, is for the unitary case. So let me fix a quadru uh, well, the base field is called F zero. Um, um, so let's fix, I mean, okay. I, could have just fixed QP, but just to make sure, just to indicate there is a more general version which allows you to take any any uh, finite extension of QP as a base field. But anyway, for this talk, I'm happy to just allow uh, to consider the base field to be QP. So take a quadratic extension on ramified and consider a Hermitian space of dimension n and consider a self dualis. So here, mu will be specif uh, specified by, uh, well, by so-called some signature signs. Let me assume it's R and S. Um, so, so then the corresponding uh, uh, data for the PDV group will be a triple uh, PDV group with a OF action and uh, plus a principal polarization. So then this choice of signature appears in the Cordovitz signature condition. Uh, which says this char characteristic polynomial uh, is specified by um, by the so here this means a embeds into uh, of really uh, by the you know it's already fixed one so the other one is 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 obtained by the Galois conjugate so that's the signature condition you get so um. So then, okay, you consider this modular space. Maybe I will ch uh, change, modify a little bit so we also impose a condition of height being zero for, for the framing, just to pick up, just to pick one component out of the possible infinite many components. So this doesn't really change much. Uh, just to make sure I'm, I'm pretending I'm working with unitary group rather than similitude unitary group. So this height of zero condition. So anyway, so this modular space has relative, it, it's again formally smooth by the general result I, I mentioned earlier, the relative dimension is computed using the signature R times S. So again, for this talk, the interesting case will be um, when the signature is, uh, one of them is equal to one. Um, so the special case will be when I equal to one, um, um, so then the relative dimension is zero. 
and the universal uh, universal Peterson group uh, is is actually the canonical lifting uh, uh, with a specified OF action. So, so that's the case we have. So okay, then I can move to my actually what I need for for the for the more general uh, non reductive case. So, so here, uh, so next slide, let's consider are the space for long reductive long non red group. So therefore, I put a blue blue pencil here. <laughs> the uh, non reductive group, um, but only the E L or P L case. And uh, so actually, maybe the name is is misleading. I really meant here is really a parabolic subgroup. So there is a certain ambient group involved. Um, so which is the group G, where we use already in the uh, in the definition of RZ data. So I, now I can just go back to the RZ data here. I just have to modify um, by so in the EL case, it's easier to uh, it's easier to do in the EL case. So, so here, all you have to do is to uh, uh, to put a filtration. So. so here, let's consider a field. So the field change to so sort of a filtered data. Sorry, the data. Um, so this is more or less sort of uh, just adding a filtration. So V zero. We are in the EL case, and in the PEL case, you—I uh, mean, I could have just copied in the Bessel when I define the Bessel group, where you, you add a filtration which is symmetric. Well, in the sense, you know, there's there's orthogonal complement condition for the for the first one, the last one, and so on. So, um, but then I also have to impose a condition that. Um, Uh, the mu and b, you know, those, the the co-character and the conjugacy class of uh, sigma conjugacy class, they must really factor through the corresponding parabolic. So, so this e on the p o case. Um, so in that case, I will consider. Uh, the parabolic, so the parabolic P will be will be the same group, but preserving uh, the chosen filtration. So, so G O V, but also preserving the filtration. So it's a parabolic of G um, defined earlier. Um, so unsurprisingly, uh, from here, I can consider uh, a modification of the RZ formal module space. So here, rather than considering um, uh, a pd visible group, all you have to do is to add a filtration uh, of pd visible group. So in other words, so here, um, so I can go. So, so we consider. So this will be a filtration of PDV group. So x1, x0, trivial one. Um, and the rest doesn't change. Um, so in the PL case, you have to also require uh, this filtration to be to be symmetric or well, symmetric in the sense I explained earlier um, so then you form the modular space in a similar manner so you again you fix a framing object which is a, a fixed guy over the residue field f um, such that it's corresponding uh, isocrystals uh, uh, the induced filtration uh, uh, on isocrystal uh, is actually the one specified by the uh, 
by the data uh, by by B uh, by the uh, element B. Um, so but it's rather uh, impose the cut width condition on the successive quotients. So that will be specified. That's right. That's a very good question. So you have to write. So here, this filtration. So mu has to be compatible. So mu has to factor through p. Um, uh, okay, QP. So that will specify for each uh, field, each step, what the codice condition should be. So it will be specified by the decomposition. So, okay, my notation is actually not. <laughs> so here, so I have to have do this decomposition for each of those subspace. So apparently I cannot call it v0, v1 anymore. So <laughs> maybe I call it upper one. So here. But don't you want to have the lower guys to have signature zero or something? And only the guy in the middle, so to speak, signature one or something? Uh, that is, I think, in the you mean in the PL case. For instance, no, you for you, you, for the EL case, you don't. It could be arbitrary. Okay. Well, there's there's constraints, right? Definitely, its dimension will be smaller than the total dimension. But that's, I think, that's the only thing you get. The uh, only constraint you, you have. So you will have you decompose all those. So yeah, VI zero, VI one. So this will. This will tell you how to formulate the cordless condition. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter. Uh, no, it does matter. It will determine the dimension. So the dimension of a small space depends on those dimensions. Yeah, but for instance, in the PL case, that you don't you do this signature one comma something in the middle? Yeah. In the PL case, indeed, for all the cases I have, I actually do need to assume all those have, uh, they're sort of definite in the sense one of the signature is zero. I, I haven't checked, I suspect it's a consequence of all those restraints, constraints, because you have to impose this constraints here. Then you also have to impose um, um, uh, this, uh, mu and b both have to factor through p. So there are some group theoretical constraints. It's not free of choice. Okay, okay thanks. So, but for EL case, you can have pretty much arbitrary possibilities here. So as I will give an example. Um, so anyway, so this is, the formulation is rather easy now. So then what you get is you can again apply the uh, uh, definition we stated for the, uh, you know, this formal functor, formal modular functor RZ. Uh, so you get, first of all, you have an, so I use an nor G to indicate it's the modular space we considered earlier, where G is sort of the structure group, so which is reductive here. So where P is now the new structure group, uh, and M is the levy. Of p, so you have a clear, you have you have a, a, a simple way of defining by taking the quotient, a successive quotient, to get a map to the uh, corresponding RZ space attached to M for the induced uh, RZ data. Uh, so it's easy to prove uh, using growth and conversion theory uh, and a local model computation uh, that pi is actually smooth. Dimensions computable. Uh, so, example. Continue the example I gave earlier for for the case of GL six. Um, so, so the example here. So, was I was chosen the slope half, but dimension three case. So this space has a uh, uh, so the the structure group is GL six. Um, so in this case, it's possible to choose a filtration and a, a, a framing object such that the corresponding, uh, well, the corresponding, uh, okay, the 
first of all, the parabolic subgroup is, is this uh, two corresponding to the partition two plus two plus two. Uh, so, I mean, as one can say, it's right, it's not free of, it's, you cannot freely choose. So this is the parabolic you can get here. Um, so then you can be, uh, pr produce this modular space uh, for, for this parabolic P. So this one, if you use uh, the growth and investment the theory, you can compute the relative dimension over the corresponding space for the levy. So here the levy is GO2 times GO2 times GO2. Um, so you will actually get the uh, Lubin Tate space uh, for the one dimension in the height two case. Um, so the relative dimension is three, uh, it's a smooth map. Uh, what's less uh, pleasant is this horizontal map. It, it's not a closed immersion, rather it's a uh, locally closed. So, so it's, it's, a, it, it's an open formal subscheme of a closed formal subscheme of, of the larger, of the ambient space. So, so this is locally closed. Um, Anyway, so that's what I get. So I have this new space. It's maybe it's, I should also point out this construction is almost the same as what appeared in the in the work of Mantovan. Uh, so where she used uh, those sort of um, filtered modular space of filtered uh, P group to study a conjecture of uh, Michael Harris and uh, and. Uh, for, for the cohomology of uh, uh, for the co to study the cohomology of uh, of the generic fiber and a covering of those generic fiber. Uh, so so yeah, Mantov and uh, I, I think also work of Mantov and uh, Beeman. Uh, so they study this type of space. But in their work, uh, they actually assume. Uh, B is non-basic, so it's a bit different here. So, um, although the techniques are rather close. Uh, so, um, so I have those spaces now. So now, now let me, um, well, so now I can at least define um, my cycle for parabolic group, including this parabolic I mentioned in the basal group. So here I have a parabolic. So I can I can make this definition for oh I I only did it for P, EL case, but the PL case is rather similar. You just have to impose this polarization condition um, to uh, to make a, a, a similar definition for this parabolic. So now I want to make a connection to the Kudal Rapoport cycle, um, which made is those uh, you know those modular spaces more explicit. So in other words, um, they, they are. I mean, I don't I don't have any good way of giving any example unless I make a connection to uh, to the KR cycle. <coughs> so this <coughs> is my next topic. Um, so this is uh, Steve, uh, who was giving the talk in, in this conference. I I put in the in the beginning of this talk. Uh, so you know, two thousand seven. When I was a third year graduate graduate student, uh, <clears throat> where I think he was speaking about theta, I mean generating series, uh, as you can tell here on the board, uh, generating series of special cycles, and uh, and I'm I'm sure it was about unitary group because uh, as next photo shows, this is for the quadratic extension, which is imaginary. <laughs> so, um. And the signature, yeah, is actually, yeah, same location today, maybe RMS. Uh, so, so here are the KR cycles. <clears throat> so they are actually, uh, they also exist in the global situation. So globally, so I'm not gonna repeat all the definition, but very quickly, so the global modular space, those are integral models of uh, unitary Shimura varieties. Uh, roughly they parameterize uh, a binary variety with a, um, a PL structure. Uh, so here I have n-dimensional case where 
I use again. I'm specifying the same signature condition as 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 above. So here you also put a one-dimensional guide. So this is the uh, the sorry the modulus space of elliptic curve with complex modification. So then the KR cycles are defined by uh, the following moduli functor, namely uh, they are uh, they parameterize um, all the possible quasi uh, all the possible uh, um, sort of splitting of a. Uh, you want to split a up to isogeny a one dimensional factor, um, and then of course you can define invariance, which is uh, which is this permission form, which can be naturally defined using the polarization uh, on the space of all such homomorphisms between those two abelian varieties. So that's a global cycle. Um, so, so actually there's a condition on, on this uh, possible permission parent. It has to be non-negative. In fact, it has to be positive unless this homomorphism is zero uh, due to the positivity of the Rosati involution. Um, so this is a global constraint here. So nevertheless, from there, you can form a theta series, which is my first attempt to pass a theta test for this conference speaker. Uh, so you perform this uh, theta series from this global cycle. Of course, I will move to the local cycle. Um, so the local cycle is defined analogously, except here I have this additional framing. So I have to, so I can consider this uh, the framing object uh, in the n dimensional, one dimensional case. So you consider all the homomorphisms. So this also admits a uh, Hermitian structure given by, induced by the polarization on the source and target, respectively. Anyway, so the definition is rather similar. So you consider uh, the functor where this special homomorphism, so this is fixed, you, you, you pick one, say non zero. And Non zero vector here, then you form, you consider the, the locus in this product, on this product, where the PDW group, um, uh, so where this quasi isogeny actually uh, becomes a, sorry, this, uh, this quasi homomorphism actually becomes a homomorphism between two, two PDW groups. So that's sort of the local analog of this global definition. Although here you already observe there's something strange happening. Um, so locally, there's no productivity condition imposed by Rosati evolution. So globally, this productivity condition uh, particularly rule out of the possibility. So in other words, so this global cycle, or in this case, actual divisors, they never see those vectors uh, they don't see those cycles when U has zero norm, sort of isotropic vector. Well, it might happen locally uh, for this formation space over P adic field to have a isotropic vector, a non-zero vector. But globally, this is not gonna happen because, because of this positivity condition. So somehow, uh, so the, those local special side divisor for isotropic vectors they never get a chance to make an appearance in the global definition. So it turns out um, those guys are actually rather interesting for uh, for the for the uh, form module space I defined earlier. So to be more precise, so now let's consider well. So this definition easily generalized to. Uh, not just one special vector, you can impose more conditions. Say, you can impose, um, say, uh, a rank R lattices, uh, rank R lattice, which uh, generalized by R elements, R vectors. So you can define this guy, uh, KR cycles, as the intersection of, of uh, those, those guys. So in the case of rank one, uh, rank one lattice so with one generator, non zero generator, okay, so you use non zero. I mean, yeah, U is not zero. Um, then this is a relative Cartier divisor. Um, when, so that's the sort of minimal case. 
in the maximal rank case, uh, it's actually a uh, um, it's, it's it's a proper scheme. So there's no there's no formal part. It's actually a scheme rather than a formal scheme. Um, so those two are important. Um, um, so now let me define for for any lattice L. Uh, let's define uh, well ZL dagger. Uh, the dagger uh, locus will be the locus where this map this morph is, is formally smooth. So let me it's 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 an open formal such scheme of ZL um, where the under well the underlying Radio scheme is is an open subscheme on the radio scheme of this guy, uh, where the tangent space is has the, the expected dimension. Uh, so, so the theorem one can prove is the following connection between this reductive uh, non reductive version of R Z space and the K R cycles. So the theorem says really it's a disjoint union uh, of um, of um, the K R. Uh, Cycles well, the formal formally smooth locus of car cycle, the dagger locus. So if you think about those, so the connection between between the KR cycles and the smooth locus, it, in some sense the dagger locus, the smooth locus, it is the easy part. Um, um, it's easy part, in, in a sense. Uh, well, it's smooth. I mean, it's a smooth locus. So Z, ZL is could be highly non-smooth and has a very bad singularity. It could happen, but I'm kind of simply uh, eliminating or deleting uh, the singular locus. Um, so the knowledge looks like the case of uh, uh, well, if you look at a vector bundle over a curve. Uh, seen the function field case, it looks like the analogy between thumb P and its, uh, say, compatibility in the, the Lomond style, uh, where you don't require the, uh, the, the flag of vector bundles to be sub bundles, you only require them to be locally free sub sheets. So, it's some kind of co, um, some conditions on the on the quotient being uh, locally free or not. So in other words, so the standard locus it is actually easier in some sense. So actually Steve and uh, Michael, they actually discover the more difficult objects before the easier. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so, so in some sense, uh, one could have forgotten this formulation using filtration, just you can simply work with KR cycles. You are able to actually uh, to formulate, well, to define what I call the following uh, a Bessel cycle corresponding to the Bessel subgroup I started in the beginning, or what I can call this uh, diagonal, uh, diagonal cycle or generalized diagonal cycle. So now, okay, let me let me recall you the, the group theoretical thing here I put in the beginning, where this Bessel subgroup. It's easier to remember first this parabolic. Then you can trim down a little bit the levy, you would get the best of something. So the same thing here, you want to define this cycle by the same path. Namely, let's first define, well, we have defined already this space for the parabolic. Um, and as we saw, it can be identified with this union of KR cycles, smooth locus of KR cycles. Smooth has relative dimension r, and this has this also has co-dimension r. So it's horizontal map, um, and locally closed. So then you can form this fiber product where here I consider. So on the bottom there is a corresponding map induced by, by this group theoretical embedding. Um, so then. I have this correspondence goes to those two guys. So I form this product of those two guys. And then this correspondence is, I mean, maybe called Bessel cycle. Um, corresponding to the Bessel cycle is completely par parallel to the, uh, the definition of the group. 
Um, so then, of course, one can just form this intersection uh, uh, um, between this cycle and its translation by any elements of G in G of V times G of, well, can I call it W? So those are the, so the, the nearby formation space. Um, so is this NM, is it just one connected component of the N capital M? Uh, uh, no, that's, no, it's more complicated because, uh, so there are many components, right? So if you look at here, the, the group theory here, and so, so there are those factors. So there are actually infinitely many components. You, you only choose one of them. That's what I'm saying. I mean, in other words, n small m is just one connected component. Oh the... yeah, of an m you mean, right? Yeah, the, right. the horizontal guy. That is true. Yes, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So here, I'm also hiding a lot of things. So, um, well, so I put it very danger here. <laughs> so this formula, this definition doesn't really provide what you want. Well, okay, one thing is you have to put a, put a weight factor. So that's what, in, what already appeared in the, in the, in the paper of Gangros Prasad, where you have to put an additive character due to the uh, unipotent radical of, of the basis of such group. So then uh, that's not the, the really bad thing, the, the real terrible thing is this is not a closed subscheme. So, so, so this is not a closed immersion. So I really have to actually take compatibility. So. so this is this is not a satisfactory. For the moment, I'm just simply taking uh, a Darisky closure with quotation mark. I don't know how to formulate Darisky closure on a formal scheme if explicitly. Uh, but anyway, it's a Darisky closure which gives you a closed subscheme on, on this product that's being used in this intersection. Also, you have to put this weight factor. So this weight factor is also interesting in the sense I also have to find a parameterization for, for this guy, uh, uh, I mean, for his connected component. So, so here, maybe I should have mentioned, a very interesting question is, what is the set of connected components? I don't know how to answer the question. Uh, it's definitely, it's highly disconnected. Um, I found some connected components I mean, I found some, you know, coarse decomposition into disjoint union, which can be used to put a character uh, to put in this weight factor. But then each of those component is not really connected. I don't know how to characterize those. Uh, I, mean, I don't know how to describe the connected components precisely. Uh, so this is actually an open question for me. Uh, so then, of course, I can formulate in the last minute of the talk. Um, so in the same conference where Steve was given this talk. Uh, JK was given talk on relative trace formula. So as you can see here, he was just talk, actually exactly talking about the JK Raleigh's trace formula for, for the GGP in the core rank one case when R equal to zero. Um, so fortunately, Yi Feng Liu has generalized to arbitrary, um, ab oops, <laughs> arbitrary core rank. So, Oops. Is uh, the sharing working? Ah, okay. Right. So I will not have time to describe this orbital integral, but suffice to say it's very close to the Jackie Raleigh's definition. Uh, nevertheless, you can put this derivative of orbital integral and make, uh, put, a, put a equality here as a conjecture. Um, so, so that's the conjecture I can make for. So maybe I finish with a few remarks. Um, um, so this formulation also works for, I mean, as you can say, for more general uh, non-affine. So, so when the, the spherical variety is non-affine. So the other example I was in my mind was case of GO6, where you have this parabolic I defined earlier, but then there's also the ginsburg rallis Uh, where, so this subgroup, so the Levy is 
three copy of GO2. Here you can see the diagonal GO2. So this group is called James Borales, which actually give you what well, conjecturally this is still not proved. It's supposed to be related to the exterior cube of, of GO6 L function. Um, so as you can see, just, just by the same manner and by the similar construction here, you can define the James Borales cycle uh, on this GO6 modular space. Uh, uh, no, uh, uh, EL type of RZ space. Uh, so you can try to formulate that. So, um, so okay, I have passed the, uh, well, theta, theta series test because the RTF is also the kernel function of the theta series. Uh, so that's my second attempt of passing that test. So I also end with another remark because I think there were also appearance of exceptional group so, um, so with the exceptional group, there's also example where you can have E sec E seven sorry E seven where there is a subgroup of the form of GO two as as a levy of certain unipot uh, of a certain group with a unipotent radical uh, of certain parabolic. Uh, so here one can attempt, although now there's already there's already a trouble because we don't have a RZ space at least in the integral model level, uh, uh, as a formal scheme, we don't have such modular space. It, it's, uh, so this, again, we're moving into the, probably the dark matter uh, uh, situation. Um, well, at least uh, Schultz has defined a periodic version of Stuka. So um, it's tempting to, to speculate whether one can actually make that modular space into a formal scheme rather than something like a Diamond or base shift. Um, um, so um, right, so that's okay. That's for the exceptional group. Uh, as, as, yeah. So I want to end the talk by uh, thanking uh, thanking uh, Steve. Clearly, his his lecture in two thousand seven, and accidentally the same uh, in the same conference of JK, uh, the talk by JK made me. Uh, start to wonder the possibility of formulating AFL, which I did like two years later, maybe one and a half year later, at least uh, after that conference. So thank you, Steve, and uh, happy birthday. I want, uh, yeah, that's all my talk. Um, thank you, Wei, and thank you for this beautiful talk. Are there any any questions, remarks? Uh, may I ask? Uh, I'm not sure whether I, I don't think I missed this. Did you talk about the global intersections of cycles at some point in the beginning? Yes, uh, that's that's in the dark dark matter. <laughs> I see. All right. So there's okay. there on some yes. Uh, so there are intersections that haven't been defined. I don't know how to define the global uh, version of this because um, it, it, you have to have a periodic uniformization where the group at Archimedean place is non-compact, where all the examples of Shimura variety uh, in the periodic uniformization by, by the RZ space, the, the Archimedean place is always a compact group. Mm -hmm. so I cannot okay. find a non-compact uh, group because that actually means, I mean, it cannot be a team. There's this continuous family of your your scheme. So we're continuously in the sense of parameterized by a real manifold. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I don't. So yeah, short answer is right. I don't. I don't know how to formulate a global version. So that's why I I switch to the local the local world. I think it's also similar to the situation in the KR cycle where uh, global cycle does not really, uh, you cannot see uh, uh, those, those local, cycle, local cycles. Mm -hmm. Globally, those are dark matter, but locally they become light matter. So. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say, Wei, it, it makes sense to me that you can do a piadic version because the only reason that the subgroups H and G are reductive in, yes. in the in the arithmetic GGP 
is that I made the assumption that at the Archimedean places, everything was compact. Right. And yep. there's sort of no assumption what goes on in the Piatic place. It's just an Archimedean assumption, but somehow that's what makes the groups reductive. Right. Uh, but what do you mean by Piatic? I mean, Piat, uh... Well, I mean, when, when, you, when you make the arithmetic GGP conjecture, the mm -hmm. only additional assumption you make that, that eliminates the Bessel model is that at the Archimedean places, the relevant groups are compact. In the Bessel model, the group can never be compact because it has a unipotent radical. Right, right. But no, there's but no assumption at the Piatic places, so the Piatic places look just like regular GGP. Right. No, but still need a global space, right? Some exactly, uh, exactly. But that comes from the indefinite, you know, the 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 uh, the incoherent definite orthogonal or unitary space you get out of this assumption that the real places are compact. Right. Yeah. Um, Maybe in the function field analog, you could remove this abstraction. Yeah, that's actually that's right. So I was gonna make a remark on that. So here, those guys they don't show up in the global KR cycle in the Shimura, right? But if you work with the function field, they do appear, and uh, I think we will see tomorrow in the talk by Drewy. So I think I'm yeah, I think I'm optimistic. The same construction here uh, does have a global version uh, uh, over function field. Because the, over there, you don't have this uh, compactness uh, obstruction, which, which is uh, purely Archimedean, uh, something in Archimedean, uh, I mean, for number field, yeah, in Archimedean world. I just want to add a, a quick comment, and that is that if you remember Henri Darmon's talk yesterday, it's exactly yes. the same phenomenon. Right. In other words, he. Yes. The cases in which they could prove some of his conjectures, that, which are piatic conjectures, was a case in which the Archimedean situation was signature four zero, right. uh, whereas they had various situations where the Archimedean situation was signature one two, in which case things got more tricky. And I think it's maybe related phenomena at some deeper level. Anyway. Right. Yeah. Henry is. He, yeah. He's right. He has magic to turn the dark world into the light world. So maybe in this case we can. Yeah. We can try to. I don't know. Maybe one can. Uh, <laughs> imagine this, this way of doing some periodic, uh, 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 formally some periodic questions using, uh, using uh, some, yeah, I don't know actually, yeah, so it, it's likely, I think, yeah. So does this suggest that you expect these parabolic RZ spaces to satisfy a, a uniformization theorem in maybe in the function field case, but not in the number field case? Um, I think so. I think the answer is yes, I think, yeah. Yeah, for those uh, some uh, people called it horror cycles uh, in the function field case, so defined by parabolic. Um, so, so the 2007 conference is FRG, right? I forget it. Was, uh... That's right. Actually, 2005, that was the FRG in Maryland. 2007, that was the FRG conference in Columbia, I think. So. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I don't know, is it with Dick or with, uh, with Steve? I have two FRG. Oh, this was the first one. <laughs> first one Steve. with Steve, I believe. Steve. Tom Hai, yeah. Yeah. yeah, second one probably with Dick. Yeah, next conference we show a photo from, from later FRG conference. Uh oh. <laughs> so we should send the uh, National Science Foundation. All right. Uh, so um, if there are no questions or comments or uh, more um, memories of FRG conferences, um, at this stage, at least, uh, let's uh, thank uh, V again. And of course, uh, it's now our lunch, dinner, or nightcap break. <laughs> um, so, and we will reconvene in uh, two hours uh, for Ben Howard's talk at uh, three o'clock uh, Toronto time, and Sid again has uh, made available the link for Gathertown. So, see you in a bit.